Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a 300 hour review on my Kubota KX 080-4. It's raining today, so I thought it would be a good day to uh, get this video filmed and uh, spend a little time talking about what I like about this machine, what I don't like about this machine. Uh, actually, I have 295 hours, so it's a 295 hour review on this machine. So we bought this with the tilt rotator already on it. We bought it from Ahern Equipment in Massachusetts and then had it delivered to us here in Northwest Indiana. Uh, this machine was then delivered onto, uh, delivered to our job site and it has not left this job site. So all 295 hours were spent on this job site only. Uh, we have done one oil change and now I am ready. I've, we've done the first oil change and now I'm up to needing the full service, the first full service. So I believe that they'll change the final drive fluid. Uh, I think we'll change hydraulic filter oils, oil and oil filter again, and whatever else it needs. I have a mobile mechanic that will come and do all that. But anyways, I just wanted to talk about the things that I liked on it and the things that I don't like on it. Uh, so starting on the outside here, I love the tilt rotator, obviously. It's an EC209. It is the first time I had EC oil and it's the best thing that I've ever bought. Absolutely unbelievable having the EC oil and the capacity of the bucket and just everything about it. It's, it's so awesome. I just, I absolutely love it. Uh, we had Trimble installed on it. So we have Trimble Earthworks installed on the system, on the, on the machine. I mean, Trimble Earthworks 2D system, not a 3D system. So that's been phenomenal. And I've loved that and absolutely, uh, just super glad that I put that on. So the Kubota came with a angle blade on it which actually has been really, really nice. I've really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it moves really quick. It adds extra weight to the machine, which I think is good because of the tilt rotator. Uh, so I really, really like that. I did not order it or you know plan on getting that, but it just had it on it and I actually really enjoy it. So I will consider getting that on more machines going forward. I don't use it all the time, but it has come in handy a few times. And again, the added weight is totally worth it for this machine. Uh, steel tracks on it. Again, that was already on the machine from the factory when I bought it. I did not order it with it. I probably typically would not have ordered it with those. But now that I have them, we put the rubber pads on it. And I have really liked those as well. They do add a little bit of weight, again, which adds stability with the Encon. Uh... So those have been phenomenal. I uh, I have nothing, no, no complaints about them at all. I obviously have not run this machine with rubber tracks, so I can't say how it would feel otherwise, but I have really liked them. Uh, I think it sounds really cool. Uh, and I would imagine that they'll last a long time, especially with those rubber pads. And maybe I have to change the rubber pads maybe every five, six years. I don't know, I guess it depends on how much asphalt I'm on, but uh, that's been really great. It came with the counterweight, which I highly recommend. As much weight as you can get on this machine, on any machine, the, uh, you know, it just, because you, you put that tilt rotator on the end of it, and that is a lot of weight at the end of the stick. So uh, this is not a zero tail swing, but it's plenty tight for me. I have not, I actually was a little worried, like what I want it to be a zero tail swing, but no, I, this thing, it fits any, everywhere that I've wanted it to. I originally thought like after this job, this machine might be too big for us. But now that we've been using it in tighter areas around the house and everything, uh, I can definitely say an eight ton machine, uh, which really with the tilt rotator, with the blades, with the three, three way blade or whatever it's called, the steel tracks and the rubber pads, this thing is at 20,000 pounds. So it's pretty much a 10 ton machine. But anyways, this size machine is absolutely amazing for us and i will continue to use this size machine going forward it's just uh it's been amazing so uh what else do i like about the outside or not like uh haven't really used the uh the offset boom or being able to turn the boom 
I haven't really used that very much, maybe a few times, because really with the tilt rotator, you don't you don't get yourself in positions where you really have to do that because you can tilt, turn the turn the tilt rotator anywhere you any way you want. Uh, this I, I will say the reach on this machine is insane. I'm constantly impressed with how far I can reach. Some, how far I can reach. Obviously, the tilt rotator adds about two feet worth of reach to that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the reach in this machine is phenomenal. Uh, one thing I don't like is I don't like the location of this system, this this hydraulic line. We had a rock on the grapple, came back and hit this and kind of dislodged it. We had it all fixed and it's all good to go now. But I think this is a bad design. I think this could be way more protected. Uh, somebody sent me a picture of, they had a whole shroud that was like a, a aftermarket shroud that they made that kind of covered all this. I think this is poorly designed and I think that they could do a better job of putting that somewhere else that's more protected. I just think it's out in the open to get hit all the time. Uh, what else? The visibility is really good on the machine. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's other things on the outside I don't like. I wish it would come with LED lights. I don't know why we still are in halogen light land this day and age. This is a 2021. Uh, I haven't used the lights that much. Maybe two times in the late evening or early morning or something like that. Uh, but I wish those were LED. That's just a personal preference. Uh, this bucket, this this is a 52-inch grading bucket from Encon. And it ha handles it great. I mean, over the side, if you go over the side of the tracks, it, it gets a little tippy, but... Honestly, when you have an Encon, like, I don't know, it just, it adds weight at the end of the machine. And so they just, I'm used to it. I'm used to the tippiness of it. Uh, I'm blown away by the strength of this machine. It's just phenomenal. Uh, with the with the CMP grapple that we have that goes on the end of the tilt rotator. I mean, you guys have seen videos on our channel of uh, lifting giant rocks. This week, I lifted a five or 6,000 pound rock uh partially over the side i mean it tipped a little bit but it's just i'm blown away by the strength of this thing i don't know like takahuchi is a tb290 which would be the equivalent to, to this machine uh they have two two lift cylinders here on the boom so it's dual cylinder here and uh i wonder how that would be with the same size grapple and lifting the same size rocks i wonder how how uh how strong that would be so yeah, I uh, I want to try a TB290 at some point, lifting something heavy and just see how it, you know, how it performs. I also think one other thing I don't like about you know, the outside, I guess, is when that when we're lifting up, like uh, when the arm is coming in and out, that's uh, that's super fast and everything. The hydraulics are really fast, so that it spins really fast. I really like that. But this lift cylinder is slow. I always feel like I wish it would go faster. So that's, I guess, one thing I don't, you know, it's it's fine. Like, it's, it's not a big deal. I just wish it would go faster. Sometimes I'm waiting for it to lift up before I can curl in or, to, you know, bring the boom in. So that's one thing that, you know, it's kind of a, it's just, I wish it was faster. Uh, one other thing about the outside of the machine. So this, I believe, is something to do with the air conditioner. That's the air conditioning fan right there. And when you turn the air conditioning on, that fan is so loud and like it goes on and off and on and off. And it's not, uh, it's just not something that, I, I, I would like to see that redesigned just because when you, if you have that window open, you hear that fan going on and off all the time. And it's kind of annoying. Again, not a big deal. Just something that I've noticed now that running it in different temperatures and running it when the air conditioning is going, I'm always, at first I was like, oh man, what is that fan going on and off? I thought it was actually regenning. But it wasn't. It was that fan going, that fan right there going on and off. So, uh, not a big deal. Just things that I noticed, like I said. So, all right, I think we'll uh, jump inside. Oh, one other thing that I do like the mirror placement there, there, and there. Those are really useful, actually. Uh, this is the first time having a machine this big. And so, having that mirror there sometimes when you're turning is really nice, or being able to look behind you on that, that convex mirror. Uh, that's really helpful to see if you're gonna fit somewhere. So I've really liked the mirrors on it. I broke that one uh, like three days after I bought it. 
because uh, I backed the machine too far into my barn and hit the loft and had to buy a new mirror. So that was frustrating. But uh, So why don't we jump inside and uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, so we're inside the cab now, obviously. Uh, first thing that I would say I like is I love this rubber floor mat. There's two pieces, uh, easy to clean, easy to get in and out. It's really heavy duty. And it's got like some, it's like a mesh underneath. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a honeycomb kind of, I don't know, not really. But like this is all rubber, right? And it's really soft on the feet. It feels really nice, so I like that. Uh, foot pedals are fine. Everything is good with that. Uh, this is my Trimble screen here, so maybe I'll start the machine here. And I'll talk about uh, things that... One thing that I... One of the main things I don't like about this machine, there's not a lot of things I don't like. Uh... So this is my Q-Safe uh, from Encon. That's what takes my bucket on and off and what, what can take my tilt rotator on and off. So that's what this is. This is my Trimble screen. It's like magnet mounted through the glass, which is extremely strong magnets. It's actually incredible how strong they are. Uh, and then I took the, took the Encon bracket and I drilled uh, I used one factory hole in this in this bracket and then drilled one other one and I mounted this because before it was like uh, like 3M taped or whatever adhesive to the side of this and that was never going to happen. So this is really strong and sturdy and that works out really good. You don't get really good use of the window here because it can't open all the way, but that's not really a big deal for me. That's why you have air conditioning. So the one thing that I don't, that I think is like, it's the most annoying part about this machine. Like I said, there's a lot of things that I love about this machine. And the list of things I don't like is very short, but the main thing I don't like, and I, I'm assuming this is just a Kubota thing, but every time you get in the machine, you put down the, whether you get, anytime you unlock the machine and lock the machine, or lock the machine and unlock. So this would be locking it, this is unlocked, so now you can move the machine, right? Every time you do that, it shuts off the hydraulics, the auxiliary hydraulics for the end cam, which would, I would, I'm assuming that's just the auxiliary hydraulics for any attachment you would have on the machine. And every time you get out of the machine, whether it's running or not, you have to, and you get back in, you have to push this auxiliary button here to turn on the hydraulics. So say you get out of the machine, say now, now it works. So say now, I'm, I'm, I did something with the machine. I need to get out and check. I undo this. I get out of the machine. I do what I need to do real quick. I jump back in and I go to run it real quick. Oh, doesn't work. Look, nothing. So then I have to come over here, push this button, and then I'm ready to work. And I just think that's annoying. I wish I could shut it off. I don't, I don't think there's a way to shut it off. I think that's just a Kubota thing. And my Takahuchi doesn't do that. And so I'm just kind of used to being able to jump in the machine and just hurry up and go to work. But it's like, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? And you're like, oh, I didn't push the stinking button yet. So that's that's kind of annoying. Um, just something that I have to get used to. And again, I think that's just a Kubota thing. Uh, this is my controls. This is a, a bracket and a control for my Trimble. So uh, we'll get that started here. Get signed in here. Okay, so there's my Trimble. So this, this setup right here, is not on my Takahuchi because they programmed the buttons into my, they programmed, I'm sorry, like two of the, they programmed the increment and decrement buttons into my, into my NCON controls. There was some reason that they couldn't do it with these and I don't remember why. And I, I told them I wanted to try this because when they did my Takahuchi, I didn't have like, this is uh this is benchmark and this is something else. What is this? Oh, this is the change. So every time I click that, see how it moves the point of where it's checking grade. So that's what this bottom button does. This is your benchmark button. So I can click that and it benchmarks right there. So I like that. And then your increment and decrement buttons, plus or minus grade. So if I, you can see that going up, the more I click it up or going down, the more I click it down. So anyways, that's what this is. And I've actually liked this better than what I had on my Takahuchi just because I have more functionality of it. I think it can be done better and get all these in the buttons here. 
but for some reason we didn't do it and I told them, you know what, just don't mess with it. I want to try this and I've really liked this. It hasn't gotten in the way of operating it in any way. I'm going to shut this off now. Otherwise it'll start beeping. Uh, it hasn't gotten in the, in the way of like my legs or anything and it's just, it's really, really nice. So it's, it's clamped to your, to your uh, joystick there and it works really nice. Uh, this is their blade control here. So lift it up. This is the to angle the blade you can see that like that so at full throttle this thing turns pretty fast and I think it's really nice I think they did a really nice job with putting that that uh, you can see that little point on the end so see that allows you to know when you're exactly straight with the machine I think that's was really really smart and I really like that uh, what else? What else? What else? So you got your heat and air control here. Uh, one thing I think they could do better is the control for the wiper. So it's pretty much just you turn it on and it's just full on all the time. I wish they had like an intermittent option because like when it's raining like today, it's just a slow rain. I don't need this thing on all the time. I just need it on like to run every once in a while. Uh, so when you, you, you hold it down and it, and it squirts the, uh, washer fluid which that's really nice that does a really nice job but again I wish they would uh, give an option where you could have it to slow down a little bit because full on and full off is kind of annoying this is your lights controls your light all your lights this is uh, I think this you had like a beacon light on top which I don't this is to inhibit the uh, inhibit the like the region I think it is uh, which I wouldn't recommend. I don't know why you would want that. This thing is actually really dusty inside. I need to clean it off. Should have cleaned it off for the video. But hey, it's a working machine. So uh, we've got our radio back here. That works good. Bluetooth radio. I've used that many times. Uh, it took me a while to get it connected, but it works good. I finally got it connected and it works good. It has a glass breaker up here, which I actually think that's really smart. Just pull that out and break glass if you're stuck in it or something. It's really smart. Um, you got your throttle here, obviously, and this is if you want it to auto throttle. So if you click that, you can turn it up. If you don't do anything for a little bit, it automatically throttles down. And then if you move something, it automatically throttles back up. Uh, I, often, I actually used to use that a lot, but I don't really use it anymore because what happens is when you start the machine up and you have that button on, this thing wants to throttle the engine like instantly. And uh, I don't want to do that when I'm starting it because there's not oil pressure built up and it's hard on the machine. And so I've been just trying to get in the habit of throttling it down when we're done, shutting it off, and then uh, throttling, throttling it back up when I need to. So uh, this is the, your hour meter all your, your fuel and everything. I just filled it up. It's real dirty. My goodness. You would have thought I would have cleaned it before I did this. Anyway, 295.5 hours. What else? What else? What else? What else? The cab is really nice. I think the location of your washer fluid there is actually pretty decent. Uh, there is a lot of wires going on here. This is all in kind of stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. It's got to be there, so... It's uh, typically this would not be there. It looks like I need to clean some water bottles out of here, but uh, we're fogging up in here a little bit, it looks like. But yeah, overall, the cab is really nice. Uh, a lot of nice visibility. You can see out of here really well. Uh, I really don't look in the back mirror, at in the back, back window very much, unless I'm looking at that mirror that's back there. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice machine. The seat is really nice. I ordered a seat cover uh, from Oh, man, I can't remember where it's from. Like JC Custom Seat Covers or something like that. I don't know. Somebody sent it to me on Instagram, and I ended up ordering one. And uh, it's been really nice. Uh, it was. It's not like custom fitted. Like it. It fits good. But uh, I had to put two holes in it because to get this uh, the headrest back in, I had to punch two holes in it because they didn't have a cover for the head headrest, with it, which I thought was weird. But uh, whatever. Uh, this locate this this thing here is to be able to I believe to lift out that window right there And it, it can sit right in there right in these slots and then get snapped up in here And uh, that works good. 
This is my mob armor mount. So this is what I use to like film videos when I'm excavating. So they, they send you these little pads and you can stick them on the glass. And then this is super strong magnet on this side and this side. And then I have a magnet on my phone and uh, I can, uh, you know, just see, I just magneted, magneted, magneted it to the phone and then I stick it right there and uh, we can uh, video. Obviously you can't see anything right now, but so that, I have another one down there. I don't really use that one like I thought I would. I actually want to put another one of those, one of, one of these. Uh, I want to put another one higher up, like right here. This would be actually a better view. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, what else? It has a little sunroof, which is nice. I don't know. That's pretty much, uh, it has a nice plug in here, cigarette lighter plug in for your phone. So I have that cord, it kind of runs through there. Then I have this kind of fish through here really nice and neat and zip tied so that it stays off the ground. I can kind of tie it up right there. I can put my phone right here when I need to and charge it while it's charging. So that's that's really a, that, this is a nice location for this, a really nice location. I think this is a bad location for the cup holder because if you have a cup with like a straw and you put it in there, you're always hitting it with your joystick, I found. Uh, so I typically will use like this back cup holder, which having two cup holders is really, really nice. But I think this could be lower and then it wouldn't be such a problem hitting it with your with your joystick. So again, minor, minor things, just things that I've noticed while, while I'm running it. So, uh, but yeah, I'll jump out here. And uh, so yeah, overall, this machine has been phenomenal. I really, really like it. Uh, this machine may have turned me into a Kubota guy for a long, long time. It is so strong. The lift capacity is incredible. Uh, I'll show you these compartments. This opens up really good. And then if you reach in here, th this one open, let's see, this one opens up for your fuel. So you get your fuel fill, fuel fill right here. And it's got a little gauge so you can watch it filling up as you fill it. And I just filled it a little bit ago. And then if you reach inside here, you can see that latch. Let me get that undone here a minute. You can open up this compartment, which I think this is fantastic. I mean, look at everything is out in the open. Batteries here, which that's nice. I actually wanted to put that back over that. This is your water fuel separator. Uh, I know that because we had this thing gel up when I first got the machine, and so I know all about that. This is your oil filter giant oil filter i think that's your oil filter no hydraulic oil no this is your oil filter huge oil filter over here fuel filter right here it's a canister fuel filter i don't know where the hydraulic filter is is that the hydraulic filter no it says oil filter on it yeah i don't know where the hydraulic filter is but i don't know i'm not a mechanic i pay people to do that stuff but yeah, so this thing opens up really, really wide. Get your air filter over here. I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything about this because I don't, but I really like how much this thing opens up for serviceability, so that closes. And then you can see that latch right in there. Latches to that, so let me reach in here and do that a minute. Got that latched in there like that. And now you can close all these other compartments here. So, very, very nice. It's a, it's a beast. Really, really happy with it. You know what else I like about it? The grease fitting locations are all easy, easily accessible. So when you put the boom all the way down, they have like, this is one that you wouldn't be able to get without a ladder right there. And they have that one right there. They have a little hose that brings it down to right there. And you actually need that. When you put this boom all the way down, you can't reach that one without a ladder. And they fix that by adding that little piece. So I really, really like that. That pretty much concludes my uh, 295 hour review of the Kubota KX080-4 mini excavator. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the video. Leave us some comments below of 
uh, what you think about it and if you have any other questions. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next one.